Welcome, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today on this wonderful Friday morning. I hope it's wonderful wherever you are. I know that you're busy, and you could be doing so many other things, like watching Criminal Minds on Netflix, but you chose to be here with us, and I'm so grateful for that. As you all know, I'm Dan, and today we're joined by Mike Olson. Hello, everybody. So I'm Mike. I'm from our professional services team. And so basically what we do is we put the pro in the services that Job Nimbus can offer. So um, me and my team, we all have professional backgrounds in the roofing or construction industry. I myself was a superintendent for a custom home builder out in California. And then I was uh, helping my father with his general contracting business for as soon as I could pick up nails on a job site, I was out there helping him out. So we're really excited today to start, you know, talking about these top three things to help you manage your projects. So we're going to hop into Job Nimbus, hopefully give you guys some great tips and tricks, really start to open up those questions. But we're going to hop into our contact. So here you've got your Job Nimbus system, and we'll go ahead and jump into contacts. So when you're on contacts, we want to make sure that you're looking at your board view. So the Boards is a really great, fun tool that we can color code, make it look really pretty, but it's a really easy way for you and your team to visually digest your workflow that you have that every single customer is going to go through. So here we've got it broken up into sales, production, and billing. Sales, let's hop into that one as an example, where my sales team can be responsible for looking at this board every single day, knowing exactly what customers are where in these nice, neat little columns that we have or buckets, however you want to name them. <laughs> but in this example, um, we've got some people we need to knock some heads on where estimates we've been sitting in here for over a year and a half. So we need to probably move those to lost. So the beautiful thing about the boards is it's really easy to just click, drag, and move it exactly where it needs to go. And so your teams have that responsibility every day to check the boards. From an admin level, you can see everything going on within your company in those different areas. Another great piece of the boards is they really talk to each other. So in this example, we've got two and signed contract. That's fantastic. What if I jump into my production board and my production team can check this and see exactly when those signed contracts are coming in and be able to continue to move them through your process. So nobody's you know sitting for a long period of time don't look at mine, might have been sitting here a little bit too long, uh, but we're able to, you know, get on top of those lead times. So the customer's not waiting too long for the production to actually start on their job. And you can move them through all the way to work complete. And from work complete, we're able to inform our billing or accounts receivable department that this customer is done and ready to be invoiced so that we can get that ball rolling through the customer contact, which now we can talk to Dan a little bit about how we can inform contacting the customer and also just the power of the boards in general. Yeah. I real quick want to hit on the you know, really the power of the boards because you, it's important to know each step of your job process and to know what's coming down the line and where your contacts are in your job process and what needs to be done next. Breaking up these boards is awesome so that they can be managed by a specific team. And it's so awesome knowing where your contact is and what needs to be done next. It really helps you be more efficient. Now, another thing that is extremely important, as Mike pointed out, is communication. If any of you have been on a webinar with me before, you might have heard me say that communication is key. And I will die on that hill. <laughs> communication is key in any business. If you're not communicating with your clients, if you're not communicating with your team, you are not doing anything. You are not working. So let me give you some tips and tricks on how to upgrade your communication. Now, you might be typing in the same email over and over and over again, banging your head against the keyboard thinking, I just sent this email to someone else. Well, I got something for you, and that is email templates. So if we go to our settings here, uh, you'll have to have admin access to be able to get to your settings and then go to templates. This is where you can set up email templates that you can send to multiple clients and only have to type them up once. So if we go down to our uh, through our email templates, we have, oh, so many email templates that we like to send out to our clients. Now, let's, like this welcome email, this is a great email to be sending out. It really helps you get on the right foot and put your best foot forward, show how professional you are by welcome, welcoming them to your company. Now, as you see, I only have to type this out once and then I'm done. 
And you might be looking up here and being like, what the heck is this garbage? Why is it saying high contact display name in my email? That is so unprofessional. I'm sure you might've gotten emails that actually say that. I know I have. Well, this right here is a template field. What it does is it will pull information from your client's file and put that information in the email. So you don't even have to look it up. You can just say, send this email and it will already have that information in. Now, as you see, we can put template fields in our subject line to make them more personal to your clients. We can also put many different template fields in here. There are so many different template fields in this drop down that you can go through and figure out which one works best for you. Now that way, when we have an email template, uh, we can go into a client. So let's go to Natasha's file. And when we click send email, we can choose that template from your uh, template dropdown. And there you go. It already puts the contacts a name in there. I did not lie. It does that. And you're ready to send that out. So this is going to save you so much time and really help you look a bit more professional. Yep, it really does. And so this is kind of a best practice for a lot of companies and ones that I've worked with is that communication aspect really sets you apart from your competition where if you can build those generalized templates and then use those fields to customize them to each customer that you're sending it out to, you're going to look a hundred times more professional than the next person. And along those lines with those automated email templates, you know, we can connect those to some automations to allow Job Nimbus to handle some of that heavy lifting for you and your team. So I'll, I'll hop back into our settings here. And from settings, we can actually go down to automations. So automations is a really powerful tool that we have within Job Nimbus so that Job Nimbus can handle the details of your work so that you can have more time for that outward facing work with your customers. So in these two examples that we have here, the first one we'll look at is this contact payment reminder. So if, for example, the way that you're billing your clients is allowing them some time to actually pay you on those invoices, we have this automation built out so that if we've sent the invoice out to the customer and if that's due within the next two weeks, we'll send out an email reminder to the customer letting them know, hey, you have this invoice that's outstanding with us. You have until X date through the template to pay it. Another great example would be an overdue notification to the customer. So this is something that can be automated to send out so that your billing and accounts receivable department is not having to chase that customer down on their own. We're allowing Job Nimbus to help with that lift. So in this example, we're going to give them three days after we've sent the invoice to them. So if it's due upon receipt, it should be fairly immediate, but three days have elapsed and this invoice is not yet closed. So there still is an outstanding balance on it. Well, we're going to send out an email reminder to the customer saying, hey, Natasha, thanks so much for allowing us to do your work. We do have this invoice that is outstanding. We'd love to, if you have any questions about payments, please reach out to us just so that line of communication is open automatically for you and that customer. Yeah, so we really hope that by using boards, a, the way that we showed those tips and tricks of breaking your boards up so each team can manage a different set of boards, uh, by creating those email templates to really efficiently and effectively send your communication to your clients, and by setting up automations to send reminders about invoices, we really hope that, and we really hope that that helps level up your business. Now, if you want an even better level up, let me actually give you a little a tip here, and that is our professional services team. Now, Mike already pointed out a professional services. We have a team that a, does this, and it's really cool. I actually want Mike to, could you tell us yeah, a little bit more about it? Definitely. So me and the professional services team, we are here to help train you and your teams with those best practices, with that industry expertise, as well as we have the benefit of being inside Job Nimbus five days a week eight hours a day, sometimes a little bit more, don't tell my <laughs> boss, uh, but we really want to make sure that we offer some good training for you and your team, whether it's over Zoom or we can actually come out to you and do some on-site training. So Dan's going to post this link in the chat for anybody that would like to sign up or request a little bit more information about it. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to learn about what your business needs are and how we can kind of fit that need to help you level up that much faster. Yeah, so they'll they'll come out to your office. So if you have a really cool office that you really want to show off to us, go ahead and, and give them a call and 
they'll take pictures. And yep. We love snapping pictures. We love getting some, some cool videos that we share with everybody back at the office here, because again, it's a fun learning experience. So if you have a great company culture, we want to learn about it. And like Dan was saying earlier, we want you to actually come out here and potentially learn with us. If you want other resources, uh, we got more resources for you. And as Mike said, you can come out to our office and that is, is for our crew event. Our crew event, you come out to our office here in Utah, you rub shoulders with us and at Job Nimbus, get to know our culture a bit better, uh, get a talk with our devs and tell them what you want to see in future releases of Job Nimbus. You can also talk to like-minded individuals in your industry from all over the nation and figure out what they're doing in their company and possibly take some of those any tips and tricks from their company and import them into yours to really give you that level up. As I've said, I think that when we all share what helps us grow, everyone grows. Now, if you want to dive a bit deeper into the boards, we are actually going to be doing that next. In a, the first week of June, we're going to be diving. We're going to become Miss Frizzle, get in that magic school bus, dive into the boards, go all, all the ins and outs in the boards, learn all about it. And so go ahead and register for don't let your clutter control you. Because we really want to make sure that your boards are organized. Now, if you want other resources and you're in the web app, we've got two little icons there. The question mark is our resource center. If you click on that, you'll see all of our announcements. We have tips and tricks. We have news about product releases. Everything there to help you in Job Nimbus. Now, if you're in Job Nimbus and you're stuck, that's what the other icon is for. It's our chat icon. Chat with a live representative and get that help you need right now. We also have other videos up on our YouTube channel. We have all of our previous webinars there in the playlist. We have the Build Better Businesses, a playlist there to really help you out. And that's what we're here for. We want to make sure that you are the hero in your company. Now, to go along with that, if you want to learn more about boards, uh, uh, automations, invoicing, whatever we talked about today, our support center at support.jobnimbus.com has all of the articles you need. So if you are really stuck and you just need to read about it, go ahead and read our articles. And if you want to talk to someone, no, that's great. We have our phone number right there. Go ahead and give us a call. Ask us anything you need and we'll help you out. And there's our email as well. So we are here to help you. Now that right there concludes our instruction portion um, of our webinar. We are opening it up to Q&A. So go ahead and ask those questions. And uh, see. I see I see Deborah's question. So that was a great question. Is the service free? So the professional services department is a additional fee for you and your team. So we do have a couple of different packages that we offer. So you can use that link, request some information. We'll have a sit down meeting with you and your team kind of understand what your business needs are, how we can fit those needs and really make the recommendation of what exactly like would you benefit the most from an on-site, which I can't speak enough about being actually on-site with you and your entire team. Having that open dialogue really helps create the best job Nimbus system possible. But a lot of these resources that Dan was pointing out are free to you. Our chat teams are probably one of the best in the industry <laughs> where they're able to answer your questions quickly and concisely. Uh, the kind of pro of professional services is that we really want to take what makes you special as a company it makes you the most professional in your industry and translate that and make sure that it is fully customized inside your job Nimbus system. And that's something that we will do for and with you and your team. Thanks for that. I'm um, also seeing another question here about template fields. I actually want to jump into that. Ooh, um, let's, let's show it off. I mean, that's a great question. Uh, it's, do the template field symbols work for all personalized fields or just the contact name? That is a great question. Um, wasn't going um, to jump into this very much, but I will, because that is a great question. So if we go back to our welcome email, I'm going to really mess this up. So, but I won't save it. <laughs> so we got, we have a whole bunch of template fields here and they pull from all sorts of different, they pull all sorts of different information from your client's file. We, as if you have jobs enabled, we can pull up um, information from the primary contact on that job. As you see, we can pull up address lines, cities. Uh, we can add in custom fields. So if you have custom fields, um, job custom fields or contact custom fields, you can add those into your template. We also have, as you see way down here, 
task fields. Now, one thing that you need to make sure that you a, that we need to understand is that some of these fields only work with automations, such as a task field, because there are so many tasks in your client's file that you associate yep. that you relate to your client. Job Nimbus doesn't know which one you're talking about. So if you want to use a task field, for example, make sure you set up an automation that is triggered by that specific task. And then Job Nimbus is like, oh, that's the information I need to add to this email. Yep. Like an appointment. You want yep. to make sure that it's an appointment task that's triggering this so we know, okay, for this specific appointment, I want to put this start time in the email for an appointment reminder, let's say. Yep. Exactly. Jacob, yeah. thank you so much. We appreciate that a lot. <laughs> yes, we do appreciate that. We love hearing all awesome things about our chat team or our support team because yeah. we know they're awesome. So and let me know if this helps you out uh, there with that question because we have so many in different template fields here that can pull different information, but a lot of these will only work with an automation because Job Nimbus doesn't know what information or a, like, like a material order, it doesn't know which material order you're talking about. Yep. So a, the email templates are really powerful, but they're even more powerful if you add them into an automation. So let's see if we can pull up a, a, some more information about, um, about email templates. Actually, I do have one a, to, just to show off. I have another email template here um, to kind of explain a little bit more what I was talking about. So this one right here, as you see, it pull, it's pulling from the job primary contact. So this only works with jobs and it only works since I have task owners, mm -hmm. tasks, you know, start date and time. It will, it works best from when it's triggered by a task that is created in a job and it'll pull the jobs primary contact information into here. So this, yeah, this will really help. Everyone's so busy. It's, we can't go through a, uh, through our contact files or our client files to find all this information, set up a template once, throw it into an automation and the automation will do the work for you. Yes. Jen brings up a great point. So having these emails show up in the activity feed of each contact or job is super helpful for historical records, for keeping track of when that customer might've opened it. Maybe they didn't get that invoice email, <laughs> but you can check your activity feed and see exactly when Natasha opened up that email at, you know, 3 PM on Friday, May 20th. And I know you opened it, Natasha. <laughs> so you can play a little bit of big brother, but it helps you keep track of exactly what's going on with all of your jobs yep. in those individual activity feeds. Yep. And maybe if Natasha opened it and didn't realize what it was, maybe you have to send with a bit bigger text there saying, there hey, <laughs> this is the invoice. <laughs> so does Job Nimbus sync with QuickBooks? That is a great question. And the answer is yes. So we sync with both QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. Uh, we have a wonderful QuickBooks specialist team uh, that can help you set up that sync if you really need it. Um, and we also have, oof, might be shooting myself in the foot here, but I believe <laughs> we still have a, if you don't have it, a setup, um, you, yeah, here it is. Uh, click on help me get started. And that will have a walkthrough to help you get started with at least QuickBooks online, help you get the setup started with QuickBooks online. Um, but yeah, first thing you need to do is go into your features and turn on the QuickBooks integration, just toggle it on, and then you'll see the QuickBooks page show up and you can start syncing that right away. Yep. Karina's got a good question. So how do we turn off automations for certain customers? So that comes into looking at automations with those conditions. So we add conditional statements to these automations so that we know that when that condition is met, that's when that automation is going to happen. So either, you know, you don't want to send a thank you and review email to a rude customer that didn't have a, a great interaction with you and the team. Well, maybe I want to put a little checkbox that says the customer was a jerk or they <laughs> give them a, a one through five star rating for the customer and only Four and five star customers are going to get that thank you and review email. And one through three, we're going to build a template that says, hey, how we love working with you, but how would we be able to improve? And just kind of audit yourself as well to make sure that you are giving five star commitments to those customers every single time. 
Yeah, and that comes in with uh, custom fields. Yep. So you build those custom fields, and then you can add those custom fields into your conditions. Um, as you see, let's see here, um, HOA here is a custom field, and I can add that in to my condition. So you can build those custom fields, put them in a condition, and only send them to specific customers. Yep. Uh, can you add a contact email when you create a job on the job tab? Uh, so that is where your when you're using jobs, that is where your contacts really come in play. Your contact has all of that contact information. So it has the contact's phone number, it has the contact's email, and then you associate that contact with the job. And then it'll add, be a related contact to the job. So you can use that when you're sending out an email from the job. So let's go to a job here. Um, bum, bum, bum. You can kind of think of it like a family treat where you've got, you know, mom or dad's the contact and you've got little little baby job is connected intrinsically to those. So all that email communication is going to go through that primary contact and for each specific job. So those jobs can have different addresses if they need to. So as you see with a Fifth Street Mail, a th Fifth Street Mall, wow, Fifth Street Mall, um, <laughs> uh, Fred is a relayed contact. And when I go to send an email, Fred's name is the first to pop up. And we can a, easily send an email to Fred from the job. And that's a great way to keep your communication clear. If you're using jobs, always send the emails, a, emails out from the job using the related contact. So everything, uh, all the communication for that job stays in the jobs activity. What else? Uh, if I have another follow-up question, oh yeah. Let's see, how, how would we reach out if you have other follow-up questions? Yes, that is a great question. Thank you for asking that. You can always reach out uh, via uh, calling our support reps and they can help you with anything in Job Nimbus. If you want to email, uh, email uh, you can email. Let me get back to that screen. Uh, here's our phone number. If you have any other questions, follow up questions, go ahead and give us a call and, and chat in or email us and our support reps will be able to help you. And if you say, hey, I had a follow, a follow up question I, on the <laughs> from the webinar. Yep. This was what I asked at the webinar and this is my follow up. They can always you know, talk to me. I'm sitting right next to the support reps. I chose that spot because they're amazing. And <laughs> and so, yeah, they can they can always ask me for clarification and I will I'll give them the clarification that they need. Yep. So um, is there any way to track inventory through Job Nimbus or is there any inventory app that integrates well? So Ooh. we've had this question pretty recently. Yeah, so, I was going to say, yeah, I've heard this question come up. Yeah. So with inventory, how we would do it is your estimates and invoices will sync over into QuickBooks. So you are getting a actual line item total of what's coming from that estimate. So it has to be something external from Job Nimbus. We do have a way to connect to like a Google form or something like that through Zapier. So using an external system to track the inventory would be the way to go right now. But our products and services, we're going to be, you know, working on that, improving it from feedback that we're getting from webinars like this, or also customer feedback that we're getting directly sent to our customer success team or our professional services team. So thank you for the question, Chris, but right now it would be an external system that you would use to track that inventory. Yeah. And I'll talk to our uh, product managers and give them this feedback yep. for you. Um, yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, so we are uh, almost out of time, but we want to see, we want to answer as many questions as possible. So I'm going to check the Q and A again. Okay. Nothing in there, but if you have any last minute questions before we, before we end today, uh, go ahead and get those in and we will answer them. Yeah. Thank yeah. you all for taking the time to, to hop on here and, you know, just hang out with us really and learn a little bit more about job Nimbus. We appreciate it. Uh, let's see, can I tag when I leave a note in the new app? Yes. Okay. This is a great question. Yes. Um, now this, and I'm just going to point this out. This works on the Apple devices. So if you have an Apple, it works perfectly. I wish I had my phone set up so I could show you, but you go to leave a note. You um, There's an at symbol that you click on. It brings up a drop down of all of your team members and you can choose your team member. Now this is coming soon on Android, but it's not there on Android yet. 
So yeah, if you're using an Android, uh, just so you know, it's coming soon, but on Apple device, it's super, super simple. And also the when of your question is anytime that you add that note in the activity feed of the contact your job, you'll see it timestamped who exactly did it, when they did it, and what kind of device it was. Yep. And the person that you tagged will also be notified. And on an Apple device, and very really soon on an Android device, they'll receive notification in their notification center for that note. Yep. So Jacob, that's actually a great question. So when you're on that list view or the board view and you're adding a job, it will not automatically relate it to a contact because we're not on a contact card. So if on this one, for example, we went to Fred, who's the actual primary contact, they're designated as a contact. It's the little blue contact man icon right there. You can click on jobs, click add job, and we have a big green related primary contact right there for you when you're adding the job in. Yep. So I think a best practice with that is to make sure you add your contacts in first yep. and then associate the jobs to them after that. Yep. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think actually we've run out of time. We're at time. Yeah, yeah we are at time. So thank you. Thank you, yes. Mike, so much for joining me. This was My awesome. Pleasure. You're amazing. It was Thank you so much. I love your wisdom and helping the customers and all of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. You are all amazing. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next time. Thank you.